Hurrying to serve the customer, Michael wasn't even thinking about the tips, which any waiter saw as a nice bonus. Looking at the efforts of the determined young man, his colleagues chuckled and shook their heads. It was hard for them to understand Michael's motives, but he was simply doing his job well and wasn't counting on getting a bonus for it. The man grew up in a poor family. His mother worked as a seamstress in a factory, and his father was disabled after he suffered an injury at work. There was never enough money, as most of the family's income went towards paying for the father's meds and treatment. That is why Michael often had to go to school in worn-out hand-me-downs, which made him look down in embarrassment when around his peers. Despite the fact that his school years left an indelible impression on the young man, he didn't become bitter and remained as kind and attentive as he was as a child. Having reached adulthood, Michael decided to find a job that could help him significantly improve his financial situation. Unfortunately, it turned out to be harder than it seemed at first glance. Michael spent over a month looking for a job before he finally got one. Most employers didn't want to hire the young man without any experience and skills. Thus, when Michael started worrying that he'd never be able to find a job, Fortune smiled at him. He met a restaurant manager, Desmond Hall. After listening to the young man, Desmond wrinkled his forehead and thought for a bit. Then, looking Michael up and down, the manager asked, How would you feel about working as a waiter in my restaurant? Michael's astonished face made it obvious that least of all the young man expected to actually get a job offer. I'd love to, sir. Thank you. Trust me, I won't let you down. The young man hastened to assure his new employer. Well then, you'll get a one-month probationary period first, and then we'll see. You can start tomorrow. Desmond Hall said, getting up from his chair and shaking hands with his new waiter. A happy smile immediately appeared on Michael's face, which only confirmed that the manager made the right decision. Looking at the young man leave, Desmond Hall smiled and rubbed his hands merrily. The man knew that he'd pay Michael very little during the probationary period and would keep the rest of his actual wage. Desmond pulled this scheme off more than once, deceiving the naive young trainees who came to work for him. The waitstaff knew that the manager of the restaurant was obscenely greedy and skimped on everything he could. It was Desmond Hall who established the rules in the restaurant, which dictated that the waiters and hostesses of the restaurant had to give him most of their tips. Sure, they could argue and refuse to do as the manager said, but all they would achieve would be an immediate dismissal under a far-fetched pretext, which would leave the unfortunate person without any income at all. But Michael didn't know any of this, so he set to work with due zeal and determination. The always smiling and very courteous young man quickly became the favorite of many regular customers, who were all wealthy people and appreciated good service and comfort. On his second day at the job, Michael got his first tip, which the manager of the restaurant immediately took away from him. But sir, this is my money. Isn't that how it works? I got tipped for the quality of my service, Michael said cautiously. You earn this money in my restaurant, do you hear me? It's mine, not yours. Therefore, I have the right to dispose of the restaurant's money as I see fit. Desmond responded, getting irritated with the young waiter. Realizing that there was no point in arguing, the young waiter swallowed his resentment and went back to work. Michael didn't want to lose his job, so he was willing to sacrifice his tips in order to keep his job. At one point, the young man caught himself thinking that he could complain to the owner of the restaurant. Then, he learned that the millionaire lived in another state and abandoned this idea. A month flew by. Despite the fact that Michael was already officially hired, his salary remained the lowest in the restaurant. Even the cleaning lady, who was responsible for washing the floors, earned a couple of hundred dollars more than he did. But the worst part for Michael was the fact that the manager continued to take away his tips. The young man understood that it would hardly be possible to restore justice and simply hoped that one day everything would change. But time passed and Desmond Hall continued to take his employees' tips. Even a change in ownership didn't help. 
The previous owner sold the restaurant to a woman with multi-million dollar assets and a chain of car dealerships across the state. Of course, Desmond felt a bit worried about the upcoming meeting with the new owner of the restaurant. But on the other hand, the cunning manager was sure that he would charm the young woman, who was unlikely to know any of the intricacies of the restaurant business and must have bought the restaurant simply as an investment. Waiting for the owner to arrive, Desmond Hall ordered all the employees to keep their eyes open and be more attentive to the customers. The manager of the restaurant didn't know how the owner looked and was afraid to miss the important guest. Days went by, but the businesswoman never showed up. Eventually, Desmond relaxed and concluded that the businesswoman simply forgot about their existence. And only Michael felt as confident as before, always taking great care of his customers. The man didn't care that the restaurant's owner changed, since Mr. Hall remained his immediate supervisor. One day, while serving yet another customer, Michael noticed an elderly woman come into the restaurant. Her appearance shocked him. The old woman was dressed in patched up clothes, which made her look more like a homeless woman than a respected resident of the city. Limping on one leg, the stranger went to the nearest table and waved for the waiter to come over. Since Michael was the only waiter around at the moment, he immediately came over to the old woman's table. Good afternoon, ma'am. How can I help you? The young waiter asked cordially. Hello, I'd like to order a cup of coffee and a cherry croissant. The woman answered with a smile. Michael nodded and hurried to get the woman her order. At the same time, the man didn't even think that the customer might not have enough money to pay for her order. The waiter quickly sent the order to the kitchen and five minutes later, he put everything the woman had asked for in front of her. Thank you, dear. You're very kind, the old woman said, taking a sip of coffee. Michael had just opened his mouth to answer the old woman when the manager stepped into the restaurant. Seeing the homeless woman sitting at the table, Desmond turned purple and walked over to Michael. What do you think you're doing? Do you see that this beggar can't pay for her order? There's hardly enough change in her pockets to even pay for coffee, said the manager louder than he should have. Oh, don't worry about it, sir. If it comes to it, I'll pay for this woman's order out of my own pocket. Michael answered, trying to smooth over the awkward situation. It was impossible to calm Desmond Hall. Where would you get the extra money to pay for this old woman? Are you hiding tips from me? This question made Michael feel very uncomfortable. The manager was very rude, and not only to him, but also to the elderly woman who was at least two decades older than him. Sir, this is my money, and I'm willing to spend it on this woman's order right now. Michael continued, trying to keep his emotions in check. Unfortunately, Michael didn't take into account the fact that the one thing that Desmond Hall hated more than anything in the world was when his subordinates contradicted him. You know what? Get out of here, both you and your girlfriend. You can live together by some trash can or something. Desmond gritted his teeth, pointing the confused waiter to the door. All this time, the woman sitting at the table didn't utter a single word in her defense. Instead, she drank her coffee as if nothing was happening and enjoyed the fresh pastry. Do you need a special invitation? The manager of the restaurant yelled. The old woman put her cup on the table and raised her eyes. Are you talking to me? Such disrespect made Desmond ready to incinerate the woman with the look of his eyes, which were full of hatred. Do you think this is funny, you old beggar? Get out of here right this second before I get the security to throw you out. The man was enraged. The situation escalated so much that even just standing next to the manager, Michael felt both sad and uncomfortable under his heavy gaze. And then something happened that no one could have expected. The woman dabbed her lips with a napkin and changing the tone of the conversation said, No Desmond, I won't be leaving. You on the other hand should start looking for a new job. The manager turned pale and trying to save the situation whispered, Mrs. Lewis, is that really you? How could this have happened? Why didn't you give us an advance notice of your arrival? And why are you dressed like this? 
In response to this, the owner of the restaurant chuckled and pointed the manager to the door. I've known for a long time that the restaurant was being mismanaged. You take the waiter's tips and steal my money by buying cheap products for the kitchen. And you keep the difference, don't you? I know all about you. Desmond, trust me, you have better get out of my sight as soon as possible. Or I might change my mind and call the police." Jennifer Lewis added. Having heard the woman out, Desmond Hall lowered his head and went back to his office to gather his things. Meanwhile, Mrs. Lewis looked at Michael and said, You, my boy, it's time for you to grow. I think you're ready to take on the responsibilities of the manager. Unlike everyone else here, you value every customer, which means that the restaurant will only profit from your appointment to the managerial position. Michael looked gratefully at the owner of the restaurant and realized that his life had finally taken a turn for the better. Some couple of months ago, he couldn't have even thought that in the near future, he'd be managing a restaurant. Under his leadership, the restaurant started making twice the money it did under Desmond's management. And for all those jealous of Michael's success, he has only one thing to say. It was his hard work and special treatment of every customer that allowed him to achieve the success that he'd always dreamed of.